Pause. Well, Mr. Travolta, it's good to see you again. You I appreciate your time. You. Um, you know, I think this movie is going to create or generate like a very fascinating discussion afterwards. I think there's so much to be said about the relationship between a celebrity and a fan. And what the movie had me thinking a lot about is this kind of internet culture that we live in. We're so obsessed with celebrities and it seems like we're, you know, like wolves waiting for people to slip. And so I, but, and it's like you have to be like a celebrity full time. You have to act the right. whole time. And right. so I wonder for you, like how do you keep your roots in the ground and keep from like tipping? Uh, I have my own personal moral code about being a celebrity. Because years and years ago, I, I, I grew up with famous people around me before I was ever known. So I kind of learned by watching them and watching reactions. And then finally one day I got very enthusiastic about meeting someone and they were not very pleased about how I, I was 18, interrupted their lunch, which I really see that I did. Um, but I realized how it deeply it affected me. So now what I do is I just rise above it or I don't engage in something that I'm not in the, in the right frame of mind for. Mm -hmm. And I think that's my own uh, decision to make. And um, as far as like, you know, being, I, I've actually enjoyed being on internet the last year yeah. because I get to tell my story and in the old days, we couldn't do that. Yeah, sure. I mean, honestly, I want to get good light on you because I want to see your face too. Um, <laughs> we, we, we couldn't, if something was said or done, we couldn't counteract that. We had to just go with it. Mm -hmm. And you were the effect of that. Now, if something happens that you don't agree with or that you just want to you believe in, or you can post it and, you know, millions of people get to share your perspective on it. So there's a, as much as it has, you know, it's so-called double-edged double sword, it's also a gift to those who want to uh, safely speak up as to opposed to it randomly speaking up. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like that aspect of it. Sure. Yeah. You know? what, what sort of conversations did you initially have with Fred Durst since you have your, your experience and he has his experience with uh, being somebody that's on that uh, celebrity platform. Like, what, what discussions did you initially have during the development stages of this? He, you know, honestly, because from a very early age, I kind of nailed the whole celebrity fan rapport thing. I think Fred had a much more dramatic um, uh, or complex, let's say, viewing of the, the fan celebrity. Mm -hmm. I always understood it. I think that he was always trying to grasp it, but also understood it from both sides. And I do too, but I think it fascinated him more that this uh, dichotomy, mm -hmm. do you see? Uh, I honestly was attracted to it mostly because of the passion of the fan. Moose is what got me. Yeah. His mistreatment that the movie star gives to the character was fascinating because it made a great thriller slash possible horror. But I, I love exploring that unrequited love that a, a person can have for an, a sports figure, an artist of, of any sort, and, and the, the, what their thought process is when they imagine them knowing them, meeting them, being their friend. It's, it's, and they know that it's a fantasy and they are afraid that someone could spoil it if they met their idol. Mm -hmm. But the idea that do you stay in the what, what could have been or do you be brave enough to lose your that hopefulness that kept you going for years on end. It's a big risk, yeah. you know, and, and, and it can be taken away from you in a second. I, I empirically know this. Mm -hmm. I've watched people who loved artists and that artist, you know, did something offensive to them. And because there was so much complete, honest affinity, they got so deeply offended that it, it ended their, their fantasy about them. Yeah. They still liked them, but they were, 
they were utterly heartbroken yeah. about it. So I liked exploring that, you know, even more than I worried about the the movie star. You know? Sure, sure. Yeah. And one of my favorite scenes was when Moose first gets to Hunter Dobar's house. And I, I'm a horror fan, and so just the idea of Moose kind of going in there and going through his stuff and <laughs> looking at stuff that that meets the image that he has of Hunter and then seeing some of those things that make him more human or something mm -hmm. that seems so unlike him. What do you think Moose would do if he went into your house? Oh, he would have, he would get, first of all, he'd be rocking it up, you know, he'd, he'd be so excited and he would, he would go into my, well, in LA, in my other homes, I dedicated to others, but in LA, it's mostly a, a movie home, I mean, mm -hmm. so there'd be pictures of photographs of me and Brando and me and Sean Connery or Barbara Streisand or whatever, and he would have, it It would be whatever he experienced with, with Hunter Dunbar, He it would be on steroids. And then he'd see the the, the, the wards that, that were won over the years and identify the moves because I have such a an eclectic um, uh, range of movies that yeah. he would, you know, he'd personally have certain favorites, and if, if he saw a poster or he saw an award from it or he saw a photograph of it, he would go, mm -hmm. he would just be, he wouldn't know what to do. Whatever excitement he had in Hunter Dunbar's house would be 10x, <laughs> you know, with with me. And it, I, I, I could, I could do as if if you were ever at my house, I could, I could be the character for you and do exactly exactly what he would do at my house yeah. you know and he'd, he'd get excited about and he'd he'd have abstract thoughts that would come in and they no editing system so he would just uh comment on the movie comment on the character comment on uh the success of it uh comment on the on the some odd viewpoint of that thing mm -hmm. you know he <laughs> he would have a, a, a myriad of reactions to any given thing and because I know this guy so well in my head, I could I could do an hour of improv with him with this, which is what I used to do with Fred on the set. He would, he's a good actor, so he would he would kind of ask Moose questions every day. You know what you know what do you hey, how you doing? Today? Where'd you go? Who'd you see? Or what'd you think of them? You know, and then I'd go off on some tangent yeah. about someone, just like I did when I'm circling in the apartment about Jamie Lee Curtis and Ben Affleck and. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Leonardo, I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, it, it's, uh, he's easy to think with, this character, for me, yeah. you know. Well, it's good talking to you. I could sit here all day. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, why don't we do that one yeah, day? Yeah, I'd love to. That would be fun. All right. Thanks, man. Yeah. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Sure. Okay.